السلام علیکم سو مائی تھیوری از کہ انظر اینڈ عمر احسن ادھر آر سائکک اور اور سم وٹ یو نو بھوت پریت یا پارٹ آف مائی پریزنٹیشن ہیز بین لیک ٹو دیم بیکاز اٹ از بیسکلی اسٹرکچرڈ لائک اے گریک ساگا تو جب میں یہاں آیا تو انظر مجھے کہتا ہے کہ مجھے پورس اور الیگزینڈر کے بارے میں تو بتائیں So why is he asking me about Porus? He hasn't asked that in the last seven years. And then you, then throwing in Plato. So, so I'm glad that you stopped there. My favorite quote from uh, Plato, which to me is perhaps the greatest line ever uttered in, uh, in philosophy, let's say non-divine philosophy, is um, beauty is the splendor of truth. Husun sach ki zinat hai. So that's why Habib University is deeply invested in many manifestations of beauty. What Gulrez talked about, eventually that beauty leads to students becoming very comfortable in engaging with the truth. Even when truth on the face appears a little troublesome, challenging. Um, with that, uh, let's see some glimpses of the beauty that we are in the midst of, and then I'll get on with my Greek saga. اس کا مطلب ہے اپیرنٹلی ان دا مڈسٹ آف تھنگس آج صبح تک یہ کوئی اس میں فیلر تھا بٹ دس از اے ریئل پکچر دیر آئی جسٹ ٹوک وتھ امیر سو وی آر ان دا مڈسٹ آف تھنگس وچ از لٹریلی ٹرو ویئر اسٹارٹنگ وتھ دس تھرڈ اور فورتھ اٹریشن وی آر ان دا تھرڈ ایکٹ آف اوور ساگا بٹ اٹس اٹس گڈ ٹو ری اورینٹ آر سیلس ٹو دا انیشیل ایکٹ third act of the saga is horizon so that in many ways embodies this complex mission jo main bhi aapke samne pesh karunga ke how do we continuously um, inspire cultivate um, this engagement and community building around learning among our students and students that come from uh, a very diverse background so for our third act horizon physically and metaphorically serves as a perfect metaphor. Horizon, in the English language, with time and horizon, there are two different terms in the Arabic language. So, Ufuq, right? Our team is so detail-oriented that yesterday, there was a Ufuq here, besides Shafaq. The sun was setting. So, but they made sure that horizon is the way we want to show it. It's the sun rising, it's Ufuq. So, that's the heart of Habib University. We're always sort of, you know, emerging uh, in reflection with new reality. That obviously is uh, almost all the credit is um, in the hands of our intellectual leaders. That's our faculty who have shed um, their own experiences of many uh, dogmatic institutions and have invented this, this complete new reality in higher education that's eager and willing to continue to reinvent itself. Um, very frequently. So how do we uh, understand the third act? So this is a saga, I'm using the word saga, it could easily be tragedy, <laughs> right? Like, because we are here, uh, we are hoping to sort of pull it out of its tragic nature. So the first act, first act is very predictable. So we have the privileges of, privilege of knowing Noam Chomsky Noam Chomsky, when he was young, he was active, he is booked like three, four years in advance. So he said, okay, one of the headlines that I am comfortable with, you can book me for a lecture four years in advance that can be titled as Crisis in the Middle East. And there will always be a crisis in the Middle East. So if he had known Pakistan well, you can replace crisis in Pakistan. Yeah, absolutely. Pakistan is in a perpetual state of crisis. یہ ہمارے دوست ہیں شہزاد انہوں نے شاید اس پر ایک گانا بھی کمپوز کیا ہے پاکستان تاریخ کے نازک موڑ سے گزر رہا ہے ایسا ایک ریئلی اینڈ لیس موڑ مین سو 
we obviously started our act and everybody else had started their act in, at some particular point in this, this crisis and this Nazik, Nazuk mode. That's the first act. Jo is me unknown known of this poly crisis. All of you at some point have been culpable of not thinking about it, not paying much attention to it, not even knowing it. One of the hearts of that crisis is higher education. Pakistan is absolutely dismal when it comes to higher education especially, which is very paradoxical. A country that get, doesn't get tired. A core B cheese jo Pakistan ki crisis ke saath saath chal rahi hai shuru se, wo kya hai? Pakistan ki abadi. So a country which continuously reminds itself that it has a lot of people, right? And by definition, if you're continuously adding people, you're adding young people, has zero imagination to convert that capacity into some form of asset. So there is no country in the world, who have a reasonable population base, right? So even something like Vietnam, Mexico, Thailand, India, China, all of them, even Bangladesh very recently realized that there is great potential in having abadi. It should not be seen as a burden or a curse. It can be converted into a very significant potential, except for Pakistan. Now, after two years, when I will do this presentation, it will also go forward. Right? So Pakistan, among any kind of indices which, which look at higher education, Pakistan, this is a crisis that I bet many of you didn't really think about. While we talk about the crisis of climate and population and education in a superficial way or health and so on, where the actual disservice to the potential of this country is happening is not being able to inspire your young people into becoming citizens and then eventually leaders. The, when we entered this saga, this is something that we looked at. So why we, if I'm allowed to use a informal, suck so bad at higher education? So this is a lot analysis. Hai. So Pakistan's undergraduate education within that is regarded as the worst in the world. Where this crisis really is rotted is the most crucial segment of higher education in which you're taking your young adults who've just come out of high schools and you're aspiring to convert them into engaged and young citizens. In the world, especially the United States that has a good system, Greatest focus would always remain at the undergraduate. Aap sab ne Harvard ya Yale University ke naam sunne mein honge. While they have a great law school and a great, great business school and a great med school and so on. But what is Harvard University? Is Harvard College. Right? Even in their deepest crisis, they will get rid of all their grad schools, but would retain the college. Because that's how crucial it is in the scheme of higher learning. While they're trying to get their act together, but this was just like a recent picture. Pakistan, the idea of undergraduate is either you get into a professional program or you get into some sort of wilderness till the time you get to go out to Middle East or get married. It just doesn't exist. Prior to 2014, properly curated, coherent undergraduate program did not exist doesn't exist even outside of this space anywhere in Pakistan. So that's quoted as one of the key reasons why you are ranked where you're ranked. And the second is this. Pakistan is proudly locked with Afghanistan, some of the lowest participation possible. Ye hamari state ka apna claim hai, bara percent. It's actually a lot less than that. Jab aapki undergraduate education hai nahi, so it's logical that ev almost everybody drops out after high school. So Pakistan's actual participation opportunity is the lowest and the most crucial segment of higher education is the worst. So combination of these two keep you where you are kept. So Greek tragedies, if anybody has, a, has participated in a Greek tragedy being staged, they also audience the audience. So we were the audience of it and we wanted to be in the play. Right? So we saw that we have to make a university. Let's look at the usual suspects. Let's look at the Harvards and the Yales and so on of the world. 
we encountered with a very interesting plot twist. You didn't see that coming either. <laughs> Which are some of these headlines. So in true spirit of sportsmanship, I started with the headline about my own alma mater. This was a headline of the Harvard Crimson, world's greatest university, world's worst teachers. This is from Wharton. There's hardly any quality of teaching. So what we realized, some of the greatest universities of the world have struggled after making the deal with the devil. That they told their professors that teaching is an inconvenient burden. Get a big research grant, buy yourself out of teaching. That's what everybody started to do. So you will get Pentagon and the US State Department or some rich foundation or some rich corporation to finance a lab for you. University will take its cut, which is usually 100%. And you can just opt out of teaching. So all of these universities almost simultaneously were facing a big crisis regarding this community that Gurdjieff were, okay, how do they craft and curate a great inspiring community of young people? So we thought, no, what we want to do, the answer is not that simple. Answer is not cut and paste or copy. We have to think through it. Promise is only share that I've used. In terms of this, while they can keep a good brand and veneer, okay. So we got into our act two. After entering enthusiastically in this tragedy, we realized that this is not that simple. Chaos again is a Greek term, the void, navigating the chaos. So the very nature of higher education, we needed to understand that it has relegated undergraduate education, disconnected, degrading pedagogy. So MIT, mein, there's an informal notion. If you win the best teaching award, that means you will never get tenure. So being a great teacher is seen as a negative. That means you didn't bring in enough research money. So you better get your act together, stop being invested in your students get more invested in Raytheon, <laughs> get some money from them. And that obviously leads to not having enough interest in crafting the community that we are attempting to craft. So how do we rewrite the script completely? So how do we become an inspiring and healing model of higher education, which reinvests itself in creating this community and have our intellectual leaders lead that particular process? So we thought it's just if we are able to do it, our impact is just not limited to Pakistan because we realize many of these institutions are experimenting or trying to climb out of this rut themselves. So we can actually be a global inspiration. So our imagination became much more, let's say, robust as a result. We thought with this analysis and insight, we can be a global leader. And how do you recurate right kind of undergraduate experience? So this was our scene four, where we are the protagonist. Pehle to hum ek random audience we entered in the play. When we understood the dynamics of the play, clearly we thought, Kis mein to hum khud hero ho sakte So our vision was ki this Achilles flaw that has emerged in higher education itself. Achilles was a great hero, but it, it had a fatal flaw. We are very true to our metaphor. So any one of you who are, so please go and uh, just, just in Greek mythology, it's a, it's a great story. Usme jo ek unknown hero hai, which is Diomedes. So the question of Diomedes was that he was very wise, insightful, not reckless, not doing silly things to get himself killed. So he really then carried the Trojan Wars. He is actually the most unknown hero of the Trojan Wars, who actually won. Iliad, mein, uske mein jo Trojans ne likha hai, ke we feared him a lot more than Achilles, because he was thoughtful and Achilles was reckless. So we thought that this is what we need to do. Instead of a reckless model, where we squander the biggest ever gift that's been given to higher education in Pakistan's history, first by the Habib family, then by some of the wonderful people who are sitting here. Let's applaud them. We don't recklessly squander it, right? So first order of business was creating the first of its kind coherent undergraduate program. 
the second problem to solve was creating the most financially radical university. I'll talk a bit about it. And there's a third thing, there is a third stream of the story which I'm going to reveal in a second. So this is what was our first iteration that Gulrez is talking about. How do we actually relook at higher education itself? Instead of viewing it as a specialization subject, we actually look at it as forms of thought. So all of our students go through various courses that are curated along these thoughts. Historical and social thought, creative practice, natural scientific method and inquiry, qualitative reasoning, formal reasoning, philosophical thought. So this in itself was seen as something fascinating, right? How do we ensure that there's a consistency and coherence in almost all of our courses? So Habib University ke courses, jo hai, they are seen as a combination of these five things. Content, pedagogy, assessment, community that gets generated as a result of an experience and transdisciplinary. Now, this is casually share kar liya hai, these are regarded as among the most interesting higher educational fabrics anywhere in the world. And Alhamdulillah, I'm humbled to say that as citizens of this country or this city, they were crafted right here in this space. So you can create a great theory, but you have to house it in an environment which resonates with it. So this floor ke banne se pehle hi Habib University campus was seen as uh, one of the most inspiring um, undergraduate campuses anywhere in the world. Because you can't just claim that you are trying to do something so uh, and empowering and engaging and allowing students that kind of agency and then house them in some sort of a vertical building. So you have to create the right environment. Dusra masla jo tha wo ye tha ke ye sara jo hum fancy kaam kar rahe hain, is mein aayega kaun? So if you were to see students as a revenue stream, then you have basically lost the entire plot. Pakistan mein itna bada masla tha, the most crucial masla, which is clearly drawn on class lines. Ke Pakistan mein achhi education, Higher education especially is only available to rich students. It's that simple. With a little sprinkle of ke ek do scholarship de diye dhar dhar. Because it's liye nahi ke wo koi evil log hain, bure log hain. Lekin zyada tar people who have done it with good intention, how do they run the university? Right? When there is no other form of support that's available to them. So we looked at some of these models. Let's say Stanford is a very generous university. This is known as discount rate. So Stanford or Harvard, who have 40-50 billion dollar endowment, they recover their students from 68% revenue, recover karte hai, operational cost. Ka. 32% deficit. And from 32% they support a number of students. Right? It's a, that's a huge number. The same is with Harvard. In Pakistan, this has been a better in the past 6-7 years. No, sir, no points for guessing why. But still it is, average is just 15%. On average, Pakistan ki jitni private universities hain, they recover a whopping 85% of their cost from students. Some of the best ones recover more than 100% of their cost from the students. We said, if we were to do something waqai sincere, we have to create the most radical model in higher education history. So Habib University barely recovers 25% of its cost from students. So this massive 75% discount allows us to support almost everybody, right? Especially to support the students who were being priced out, which is a whopping 95% of your high school output, jo aapke uh, metric or FSC se jo students aate hain. Because all the pricey universities were overly represented by students coming out of O-level and A-level. So there is a rule here that 40 students have to come from metric FSE background and they are all fully funded. A complete ingratitude to many of the people who are present in this room. Why we are able to offer this radical model is I will show question mark the last thing that I So how are we able to do it? How, do, how are we the most financially radical university? That's the last bit. How are we healing our heel, literally, and getting into the Diomedes realm? Is all of you. You are co-owners, co-creators of this story. We are the first university 
outside of United States in world history who have seen community as an eager and willing partners in crafting an institution. ये दुनिया में कहीं नहीं होता अमेरिका के अलावा अमेरिका में भी हिस्टोरिकल को इंसिडेंस की वजह से बिकॉज वहाँ यूनिवर्सिटीज स्टार्टेड टू कम इन टू बींग वे बिफोर द कंट्री वॉज अराउंड हार्वर्ड जो है वो सोलह सौ छत्तीस में बनी थी येल सत्रह सौ एक में बनी थी अमरीका सत्रह सौ छिहत्तर में बना था सो इफ़ यू हैव इंस्टीट्यूशन जो कम्यूनिटी ने सोसाइटी ने मिल के बनाए हैं सो डिफरेंट नॉम केम इन टू बींग सम हाउ दैट नॉम नेवर क्रॉस बॉर्डर्स फ्राम द यू एस सो हमने गौर से देखा कि भाई ये कोई नेचुरल लॉ है जो इसको प्रिवेंट कर रहा है थैंकफुली देर इज नो नेचुरल लॉ इट्स जस्ट दैट नो बडी वॉज डूइंग इट सो वी थाट वाई नॉट वी विल बी द फर्स्ट वन टू डू इट हमें बहुत लोगों ने कहा कि नहीं लोगों को हायर एजुकेशन में इंटरेस्ट नहीं है पता नहीं है कोई सपोर्ट नहीं करेगा सिनेसिजम बहुत ज़्यादा है हमने कर नहीं विल स्टिल सो वी हैव आई विदाउट नेमिंग दैम वी हैव सम वन हीयर हु वॉज एन इवन देयर इन द फर्स्ट प्रजेंटेशन दैट आई मेड back in uh, 2012 or 2013 but they showed up at our makeshift office on tipu sultan road ki i heard about your presentation my children have gone to us universities i totally understand what that means here is my contribution such was the complete that's a misperception that existed about the generosity and the intellectual capacity of the community philanthropic community that existed prior to when we came along So again let me acknowledge these wonderful folks. So why are they co-creators? Because they see it as a shared purpose. University is not a, a isolated purpose, it's not a proprietary purpose, it's not a specialized purpose. It's a shared purpose for the whole community. Today is a manifestation of this shared purpose. Who are the hosts of this event? Who have come here before and have taken the reins of introducing this particular landmark to all of you? Umar, Amir, and in absentia, a much younger-looking Asfar, uh, right? <laughs> With an old picture. <laughs> When we started, this was a brief, but I think apt tribute paid to us by um, a, a very senior leader at, at at a good liberal arts college, which is Pitzer College outside of Los Angeles. I think I gave, this is the bravest experiment. in every way in liberal arts education anywhere in the world right now this was the tribute to our beginning so how do we get to the third act coming back to the third act you are at horizon we just shared with you 9 years of unfolding this story and alhamdulillah we have the privilege of hosting you right in the midst of this third act very eloquently introduced by gulrez this is how we see um especially in the post covid world this is how the learning experience of now and the future should look like yeah so openness transparency engagement flexibility so it is a different contract with our students so you are giving a lot of responsibility to students okay look you will face the challenge of connecting with your peers in various ways you will have the challenge of sometimes in a chaotic let's say it literally transparent environment to focus and to pay attention so it's a different environment where they realize that they actually are far more interesting people instead of being shoved into closed rooms and forced to do something we believe this needs to be the future of higher education why and this is again yahan par hum ye aap le jayenge looking at this beautiful outside one can confuse themselves ke wo kahin kisi tropical jagah par hai so immediately thoda sa kuch foot chal ke aapko you actually see a window to reality as well which is karachi <laughs> that's our window to to the reality in pakistan in a microcosm so this nurtures young leader for what the workplaces are doing already so we have leaders here I visited about a year and a half ago this uh, this phenomenal workspace at Unilever. Abhi kuch din pehle I I saw um, the new space at Systems Limited. Our own Gulrez he started this digital lab. So our students are unconsciously seamlessly are basically being inspired to be part of such phenomenal workspaces just by experiencing this. सो so, ये जो मिशन है जैसे मैंने कहा ना कि इट हैज़ रियली 
pushed us, placed us at the global cutting edge.